finally i made this video this is like the fourth time i'm making this video in this video i'm going to be sharing with you tips that will help you start out as a support worker make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because i bet you this video will be helpful for you hello everyone and welcome again to this channel i saw the comments and engagement on my video that i talked about life of a support worker so i thought to share this other video as a tip to help someone who is just starting out and some of the mistakes i made i don't want you to make it that's why i'm making this video for you when you're starting out as a support worker a healthcare assistant or a carer is going to be overwhelming so i started out with a three days mandatory training after that training, I started a three days shadowing shift. In shadowing shift, basically, you'll be going to work, but you'll be observing people that are working and seeing how they do things. So coupled with the information you've had three days and with the information of knowing each individual they are caring for, just know that it will be overwhelming. But don't beat yourself for it because nobody expects you to have all that information in your head in just six days. One of the things I would advise you is that when you're just starting out, the basic things that you need to first know about people is their dietary needs because you know this is what people are taking inside so you don't want to give them like what could harm them you need to know people's allergies and their intolerances level of food and the fluid that they have so for someone who is on a level two a level one all those terms you need to be fa get yourself familiar with it and don't be afraid to ask questions so make sure you take your time to ask a lot of questions before you carry out anything independently the other tip is don't be too hard on yourself so when you're just starting out there's so much things that you need to learn like i said earlier when you work in a care home you see people that have been there for like working 10 years 15 years you don't want to compare yourself that you work at the same pace but when you're still learning it's better to take things slowly so this work is a very risky work and it's not a kind of work that you can just do anyhow or anything you want to do. This is people's life involved. So you need to take things slowly, learn at your own pace. Then when you know you are confident, then you can speed things up. My other tip is to be friendly with people. So most of the things that I know, I get to know it from like my colleagues. Because yes, you're going to have like a manager and someone that is kind of like a direct mentor to you. But most of these mentors, they have a lot of responsibility on their desk. They will support you as best as they can. But the best people to learn from is people that you're actually working with. Because they will do things with you. They, you can ask them questions. They are kind of available with you when you're working so it's better to use it like that and to be friendly with them but friendly and professional that's what i mean by being friendly so don't be too friendly if you know what i mean or too familiar with people just try to keep it professional but be friendly and don't be afraid to ask them anything that you feel like you need help with and in most cases they will help you and how to know people that you are working for i mean the uh, the service users the people that you are caring for how to know them quicker or how to connect with them how to connect with them is by like professionally reading their care plan because everyone has a care plan but what works for me is asking questions like when i go to people's room i'm very observant i don't just go there and help people and get out i look around me i see like every room tells a story when you enter someone's room and you see a picture of football everywhere you know this person loves football when you go to a room and you see a picture of Elvis and Elton John and all these musicians in that room you know that person loves music and so going to people's room don't just go there and just give them their, the care that they need and get out try to look at the family picture ask questions if it's someone that can communicate with you if not ask the people that you're working with oh why who is this person in the picture why does this person have this photograph or, or just ask a lot of questions this will help you to connect with those who you are working for and in that when you're connecting with them it helps you to get to know them better and to know how to care for them in a better way i believe apart from a person's family the next person that is closer to someone that is being cared for is your carer because your carer is with them like three four times a week to support them with with their daily needs and everything so this person is almost like a second family to you so it's good 
to know them better and this will also help you to settle in quicker in your job because like someone like me i'm terrible with names so when i get to know this person okay this person likes music a loves music so that helps my brain to remember that person's name <laughs> and that helps me to know okay this person's food is so 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 level fluid is so, so it just helped me to connect the dots in my brain by knowing people like more than just the surface of say okay this is the name i, I want to know their interest i want to know more about their family i want to know their history so that helps me to know people well and helps me to be more confident in the care i'm giving to that person i hope that makes sense the other tip i want to i want to share in this video this basically is for carers that come from abroad the mistake that we mostly make is overworking overworking ourselves some of us have a lot of maybe people that are looking up to us for money back home and everything and so we want to like do more work settle our family and all of that when you are starting now as a support worker please do not overwork yourself please start with the basic hours when you start with the basic hours then you can know if you have capacity for more so the mistake i made is when i started i was working 52 hours per week when i was supposed to be working 39 so that's like almost 13 hours 13 hours more than the usual hours i was supposed to be working i thought oh i could do four long days and i have three days oh that's a, that that's, that sounds good isn't it like you're working for your four days and you're, you're free for three days but the three days was almost useless for me because i was just knackered i was tired from work i just want to lie down i just want to sleep the way i'm wired i don't just do work i don't know everything is connecting in my brain so when i'm i'm home sometimes i'm dreaming about work everything is just like flashing everywhere <laughs> so to disconnect from that zone and to like be productive was hard for me i love to play the guitar i love to pray to pray to read my bible and everything i found i was finding those things difficult to do because my brain was just at work when i'm at home and why because i was doing so much so i had to cut down my hours and i started doing the basic hours so when i feel when i feel like i have the capacity for more then i can increase it the other tip i want to share especially if you are a young support worker like me the only reason why you shouldn't take this tip seriously is if you want to work as a support worker for the rest of your life you want to retire as a support worker then you might not need this tip you can be working as as hard as you would as you would like to or as you have the capacity but if you have like other plans or to like to or you love to do other things is better you try to find a life and work balance this work row is actually a good role that could give you that because it works on a rotor and you won't be working like every single day so it helps you to like manage your time well so you can do the hours that you are capable of it can help you to maybe do some courses online if you are into that or you can even combine it with studying because if you're working as a support worker in the uk you can as well study so it can help you to build your career you can do so many things with your extra time so don't overwork yourself choose your priority but it's just like an advice don't overwork yourself try to take your holidays don't work and work and work and work and get holiday pay without even going for any just try to take things slowly enjoy yourself talking to people that may be relocated from nigeria as a support worker if you're not here in the first place all these bills will still get settled all these demands will still get settled so thank god that you're here to even think of like helping somebody out so whatever help that you're giving that will affect you mentally psychologically please don't do it it's not worth it it's not worth it and i am i'm a believer of like of like investing my time into something that has like almost like eternal value for me like something that uh, at the end of the day when when i'm gone i can feel like yeah i lived my life well i i spent time with things that i that matters to me yeah work matters but you are not you are not under any duress to to do more than the basic hours so why do you want to do more hours unnecessarily if you don't have the capacity that's going to affect something that will take your joy away so i'm not saying that i don't do extra hours sometimes i do but not at the expense of the things that are valuable to me 
so if that makes sense yeah if you find this video helpful please click on the like button down and don't forget to share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because i have a lot more things to share with you and i bet you're going to enjoy this journey with me yeah thank you so much thank you for your love and for your support and i will see you in my next video where i'll be talking about pros and cons of switching to a care work visa in the uk thank you so much stay subscribed and i'll see you bye bye